Good morning, everyone. All right, so we're just going to talk about CPM as it is today. Uh, I believe some of you, most of you would have some basic information. This probably will be a refresher. And maybe in case there are certain things that you are not aware of, maybe, uh, and I may not have covered during this talk, do feel free to ask me some questions after the session. All right, so um, just give me a minute. So this is how it works at this point in time, if you are working for somebody, so there's your share and your company will also give a share into the CPF account. And once it goes into the CPF system, it automatically goes into three ways. So the first goes into your ordinary account, which earns you the basic 2.5% interest. You can use this for, well the primary purpose, the key intention for this accounts are all for retirement purposes. But we, a CPF board have actually opened the use for ordinary account for housing, education. You can also use these funds in the ordinary account to invest or to purchase certain forms of insurance as well. And we have the special account which earns us 4%. So this again is primarily for retirement. At the same time, it's not all locked in. You can use some for investment which I'll go into a little bit later. And the last account is more for our medical usage. So in the event like we go hospital, we need to stay in the hospital, we need to take a major operation or something like that. So the money in the MediSafe account is meant for such purposes. And you can also use the MediSafe account uh, to buy some approved uh, insurance to cover the hospitalization and the surgery bills. So at the same time, what we see down here are the standard interest rates for the CPF board as it is right now. So, some years back, there's an, actually an additional interest additional interest of 1% that's paid onto the first uh, 60,000 in the ordinary special account as well as the MediSafe account and this is how it works. Maybe I'll talk from here, it's easier. <laughs> Just give me a minute. <laughs> okay, so this is actually from the CPF website, as you can see down here. The first, um, the first 60,000, so we will calculate based on like how much you have in your ordinary account, how much you have in your special account, and how much you have in your MediSafe account. If your special account and MediSafe account add together, it's 40,000 and below. So this 40,000 will get you additional 1% interest. So instead of 4%, you get 5%. And uh, for your ordinary account, so long as it's below 20,000, whatever you have in the, your ordinary account will earn you 3.5% instead of 2.5%. So you add up together, if let's say ordinary account plus MediSafe plus special account is less than 60,000, you will enjoy this additional 1% interest in your um, CPF. Okay? So how can we earn more interest? So you can see that there's a difference in terms of the interest rate, right? Your special account definitely gives you more interest. So actually one of my clients did ask me, what well, then I might as well transfer all my money to the ordinary, from the ordinary account to the special account. Yes, actually you can do that. But remember how, you transfer over to special account already, you cannot go back to ordinary account. So if I say you intend to buy a house, or you intend to use your ordinary account to fund your children's education or something like that, you cannot transfer back. <laughs> you have to start accumulating from scratch after you've done the transfer. Okay, we'll talk about that a little bit later for the uh, people who are of a certain age. Okay, so besides transferring from the ordinary account to the special account, what else can we do to earn, uh, make our money in our CPF account work harder for us? You can actually also invest your CPF account. For the ordinary account, so long as you have 20,000 in your account, right? Anything more than that, you can start investing already. So say you've got 25,000 in your ordinary account, you can invest the $5,000. 
So where can you invest this money to? So let's say the five thousand dollars I have in my CPF account, I can choose any of these like fixed deposits. Basically, safer kind of instruments uh, because they open up any funds above twenty thousand to be investable. So even if you want to invest in bonds, it has to be safer kind of bonds like statutory bond bonds or the bonds which are guaranteed by the Singapore government. You want to invest in unit trust also can, but you have to be aware that there will be risk in investing. So if you want to go for higher risk one, maybe you cannot sleep at night not thinking, oh no, the value of my investment may drop, you know. So these are the choices that you have. And for the more uh, adventurous one, you really want to earn a lot more money. You want to invest in stocks and shares, can. 35% of the amount above the 20,000. So let's say I got um, $10,000 above 20,000. So 3,005, I can invest in stocks and shares, property funds, or even corporate bonds. So that is, you take your own risk. Huh? And some people ask before, hey, I want to invest in gold. Can also, you can invest up to 10,000, 10% of your CPF funds into golds. So it doesn't have to be physical gold, you know, that you go to the market and buy gold. No, you don't do that. You can go to the banks, you can buy uh, gold, gold ETF, or even uh, Go deposits, let's say for example, certain so banks they offer that. Okay, special account, we can also invest, but because the, we are enjoying such a high interest in our special account, the threshold for investment will be higher. So you must have at least 40,000 in your uh, special account before you can invest the money. So say I got 50,000 in my CPF account, then I can invest 10,000 above that. So what are the things that we can invest in? Well, only restricted to the safer ones like your fixed deposits, government bonds, unit trust, even unit trust, the higher risk unit trust are not available. And uh, basically at the end of the day, what we want to do is to ensure that if you choose to take your money out from the CPF, you should earn better than the CPF huh? because you're taking higher risk. But understand there will be risk involved in investing. So let's take a look at how well like the investors have been doing. We take a look at, let's say, the year ended 2011 September. Because the scheme for investment has been around for some time, what we can see here is that there are a group of people who are doing better than what the CPF 2.5% is giving us. But that is only 17%. The other around 30, 36%, 36% of the people who have taken the money out to invest, people like myself, we are probably almost matching matching the CPF 2.5. This is the ordinary account figures. And um, quite a big portion, about 45% of people who have chosen to take the money out to invest is not doing as well as the 2.5. She quite a lot of actually making losses. So if you want to take your money out to invest, yes you can, but be aware there will be risk involved in investing. So another question that one of my clients asked me, well, I can earn so much money in the CPF accounts like compared to what they are enjoying in their bank accounts right now. So they ask me, well then maybe I can put more money into the CPF accounts. Well, there is actually a contribution ceiling. You cannot put too much money into your CPF account even if you really want to. So basically there's a calculation down there. Every month is not more than 5000 So even if you earn $10,000 every month, your CPF contribution is only calculated based on 5000 every month. And even if you, the company give you 24, maybe 12, 12 months is your ordinary pay, and the company give you additional 12 month bonus, uh, no lah, not the whole 12 month bonus is calculated into your CPF contribution as well. An additional 5 months on top of your monthly 12 month salary. Okay? So then at the same time, there is also a cap of, as to how much can sit into your MediSafe account. So when it's, once your MediSafe account hit 45,500, the additional amount will actually be transferred into your special account. So again, the objective is to help you to accumulate more money for your retirement eventually when it's to come. Okay, so this is just for information how much is actually going into your CPF based on your monthly income. So uh, those, well, it's tiered up. Uh, so when we are younger, we have more capacity to earn the money. So more money should be going into our CPF account for the accumulation. As we grow older, we may have competing needs, so we will see that the contribution rate does come down. 
uh, you can find this information in the CPF websites as well. And uh, this year, the budget uh, was a piece of good news that is being uh, announced. Next year, starting from 1st of January onwards, there will be increment in the contribution rates as well. And all the additional percentages is actually going straight to the ordinary account. I think one of the concerns is probably you know, price, housing prices are going up. So the, one of the key reasons for this is to ensure that you know, we do have sufficient funds if we want to use it for housing purposes. Okay, so far so good. So one of the questions that now the gentleman asks is that, okay, when we grow older, what happens? So let's talk about the CPF minimum sum, which is one of the trigger for this particular forum down here. So once we hit 55, what happens is that, okay, we are aware that we must have this minimum sum in our uh, CPF account. So how is it being calculated? Actually, we take first from the special account. And then, uh, if it doesn't match up to the minimum sum, which this year is 155000 then the balance will see how much we have in our ordinary account. So if I say we meet the minimum sum of 155000 when the two accounts are added together, it will go into this account called the retirement account. And the retirement account straight away earns 4% per annum. And if you have excess money over this minimum sum, actually you can draw out the money as cash as well. So it's not like, well, everything is locked up, you cannot touch. At 55, you have more than your minimum sum, you can actually draw out the excess. And then the next question is, what if I don't have the minimum sum of 155,000 when I add up the two accounts together? So not to worry, you will not be asked to top it up. Okay, so you'll see how much balance you have in the two accounts added together, the special account and the ordinary account. And at the same time, most of us would have used our CPF to buy our houses, like our HTP around here. Then we can actually catch up to 50% of the minimum sum. So maybe in this case, let's say if you have uh, 80,000, 80,000 in your ordinary account and special account add up together, then the balance 75,000 can come from the value of your property being pledged to meet the balance of the minimum sum. So once you have that add up together, you meet the minimum sum, then okay, yes, you meet the criteria already. So what happens to the retirement account is sitting there, not just to earn interest, at the drawdown age, which at this point in time will be 65, uh, it will translate into money for you. The old scheme is the minimum scam, sum scheme where you just draw out the balance in your retirement account over 20 years. Then after 20 years, okay, no, that's it, it's on your own. So now that's why uh, CPF actually introduced a new scheme, which is the CPF Life Scheme, where um, you will start receiving an income every month until we say bye-bye to the world. And if we say bye-bye to the world earlier than a certain age, right, our families still get to enjoy the balance of the money in our CPF accounts as well. So, um, and the good news is that you don't have to hit the full 155,000 minimum sum to enjoy the CPF life scheme. So long as you have uh, 40,000 in your retirement account when you're 55, or when you hit the drawdown age, you have 60,000 in your account, you can still join in the CPF life scheme. So, this is just a rough calculation. Say if I hit, if I'm 55 this year, and I have 155,000 in my account, this is how much I will be able to enjoy in terms of a monthly income from my CPF life. So it's around 1000 to 1002 every month if I choose not to leave too much behind for my family. There's two schemes. Uh. One is that okay, I take out more money when I'm retiring. Then the other scheme is that I leave more money behind for my loved ones if I should say bye-bye to the world earlier. You can choose between the two. But my question to you is that if Maybe now if I hit 55 and I get 1,000 to 1,002 every month, maybe it's enough. But for those of us who are not 55 yet, maybe we are 10, 20 years more to go, then the question is that, is that going to be enough when the time comes? Because maybe last time, right, we can find 50 cents coffee very easily. Now you want to find 60 cents coffee, maybe you have to travel very far to find one. So that's the power of inflation. Prices of things will naturally go up, even if you don't do anything about it. Okay, so that's food for thought, whether is it enough or not, whether you need to do something additional on top of that. So the last account that I'm just going to touch on today is the MediSafe account. Basically, this is for our medical needs. 
So let's say if I go to the hospital, I need to stay in the hospital for a few days, I don't have any insurance at all, at least I can draw this money to pay for my hospital bill. Or let's say if my father, he belongs to the era when he don't have any medical insurance at all, he go to the hospital, he stay for one week, need to have operation and all those things. Where are we going to come out with the 10, 20,000 from? I can use my MediSafe account for him as well. Same thing for my husband and children as well. So it's not just for me, but for my immediate family as well. But the good news is that once we have this MediSafe account, we automatically have an insurance called the MediShield. This is sufficient for us to go to the government hospital to subsidize wards, like the B2 and the C class. So most of the time, if I say we require pretty ordinary kind of uh, hospitalization or operation, this is usually enough to cover for the bulk of the hospitalization bill. But of course, there's certain co-payment that we need to make. So that's why uh, well, the government actually opened up the private insurance to come in to provide what we call the private medical insurance scheme so you can top up the medical So some people maybe feel that oh, if I'm seriously ill, I want to stay in comfort. I don't want to squeeze with other people. I want an con. So they have the choice to top up their own medical insurance so that when they go to say private hospital or even the A-class ward in the hospital, their hospitalization bill can be fully covered. So they have an option there. And also at the same time, as we grow older, uh, we are also concerned that you know, if we have a major fall, what's going to happen? We may have difficulty walking, we may have difficulty dressing and bathing ourselves. That will mean we need to hire somebody to help us for a period of time. This is where the last insurance called the Elder Shield Scheme comes in handy. This is what we call a long-term care insurance. In the event that say there's like six daily activities that we're supposed to be able to do ourselves, if out of the six, three we cannot do, this is where the scheme comes in. It gives you a monthly dollar for up to three years so that you can actually maybe hire some help uh, to help you to do the daily things while you recover. Okay, so this is the last thing about medical insurance. So first thing, personally, uh, when I do planning for my clients, this is one of the most important factors because Hospitalization and surgery is unpredictable. When it will happen, we don't know. How much is it going to cost, we also don't know. So it's important to at least get some medical, basic medical insurance. So when you look at your CPF statement, keep a watch out. Am I currently covered under any insurance at all? If yes, what coverage is it? Is it the MediShield? So if it's the MediShield, then the next question to ask yourself is, are you okay with going to subsidize what? Are you okay with coming out some out of pocket yourself because there's some co-payment? If you're okay with that, okay, then stay put. You don't need to do anything about it. If let's say you feel that maybe I want to have a choice besides subsidize what? Uh, maybe in case I want to choose doctor, I want to go to private hospital, then you may want to go and check out some of the private medical insurance schemes and then when you go to the private medical insurance scheme, then you have to ask yourself again, uh, are you okay with making some, some co-payment of, let's say, up to 10% of the hospitalization bill? If you're okay with that, then you just get your basic top-up using your MediSafe account. But if you feel that, hey, don't know that the 10% can be unpredictable. If the bill is 10,000, never mind, 10% is only 1,000, it's okay. But if the bill is 100,000, 10% is 10,000, quite a lot of money still, right? So there's actually additional riders you can top up to ensure your hospitalization bill is being covered as well. So uh, then, there are some people who, when the medical first came out, right, maybe because they're not aware what is it and they don't want, hey, how you take money from my MediSafe account? I don't want. So they unknowingly actually opt out from the MediShield scheme. So I do have some clients who don't have any medical MediShield insurance at all. So at this point in time, then the next question to ask yourself is that if you don't have any MediShield, then the next question, should I be covered? I think the answer is most likely yes. Lah. Then the next question to ask is that, can I still be covered? So if you feel that, okay, I'm still in good health, I can still be covered, then go and check out. Maybe you can just opt back into the medical scheme or you can go to the private medical insurance scheme. So um, that's the end of my talk, some basic information about how CPF works. So thank you very much. Um, sure.
CPM talking about taking oh, sorry, a body. Sorry, the body. Can you listen? The, I, 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 I can't speak.
the rent don't concern you. I'm not concerned over how many percentages you get, how many percent. What I want is my money back, and I want to arrange for my funeral, and I want to arrange for my rice, and I want to arrange for a nice settlement. Can I have it?